guys, Jessica from Peaceful Books, and today I'm here with a much anticipated for me reading vlog. I wanted to start this over a week ago, but I had a few books that I had to read for review and finishing up another vlog, I think, but I finally get to start my Christmas romance reading vlog, and so many people have been posting theirs. I know Samantha posted one, and then Brie posted one. I'll link those down below. I've watched most of Samantha's. I haven't started Brie's yet. I think hers is over an hour long, and she was reading some very interesting novellas that I'm excited for. Very intrigued. But I have a lot on my TBR. Um, I have five physical books and then a few novellas and a novella anthology that I've already started. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the books I wanna read. First though, I wanna show you, I ordered a couple books from Rip Bodice as Christmas gifts and they gave me this adorable bookmark. Let me see if it'll focus. Look at that. That is so pretty. And so I definitely stole it from the book that it was in that I bought for a friend because um, I needed to keep this. I am making it a goal to not buy a single present from Amazon this year and I have six so far I have placed an order with the Rip Bodice, I did bookshop.org and I did the Book Loft which is in Columbus and so a lot of people are doing free shipping over the weekend, Bookshop was and the Book Loft was and the Rip Bodice had a holiday sale and so I'm very excited to support them. I did place an order with Love Sweet Arrow also uh, about a month ago for a different reading vlog I haven't been able to start yet but I'll do that after this vlog but make sure you're shopping indie, make sure that you are checking what they have because I have ordered independently published books from indie bookstores. Some people are saying that it's unfair to indie authors to say don't buy from Amazon because they can only buy there. The Rip Bodice I bought indie books from and Love Sweet Era I bought indie books from. So check out all those places. I know there are also indie books on bookshop.org so check those out. I will start with the novellas I have first. I'm not going to go through what these are. I don't have time to like look up the, the what synopsis of all of these. But the first one is Wrapped by Rebecca Weatherspoon. Just this cover and it's Rebecca Weatherspoon. So I have to read this. Don't know what it's about. I feel like I did at one point. I don't know if there's a plus size character in here. I think there might be, but I'm excited to read this. Then Crystal also did a Christmas reading vlog. I'll link hers down below. And she read The Captain's Midwinter Bride by Liana De La Rosa. I had to buy this and I also had to buy Wrapped, but I was like, I need to read these now. So this one is a captain romance, historical. He's like a sea captain. I love pirate romances, so I'm excited to read this. Then I just found out that 12 Dates of Christmas by Rosie Adams was free. I don't know if it still is. If it is, I'll link it down below. But um, Rosie Adams, awesome. And this is a Christmas novella, and it was free. So I was like, yes, please click, and I'll read that for this video. I don't know what it's about either. But then I also have A Very Highland Holiday, which is the Christmas historical romance anthology with five historical romance authors. I started the first two and I have three left and so the first one was bad. It was Catherine Levex and there was literally zero romance and the romance that had developed we like skipped. So like they met. He was looking for his dead brother. Um, it takes place after the Battle of Culloden. That's the whole point of the anthology. It takes place after Culloden and it's all connected by an inn that they all stay at, I think. And so um, the guy went to find his brother's body because his brother was English and died in the Battle of Culloden. He's English. Falls in love with someone and it like skips and then it's like they're married. And I'm like, this was dumb. It literally was to set up book two, which is the ghost of uh, the brother that died falling in love with a woman who is uh, visiting the in and she's a photographer and it's Victorian and it was perfection. It was Kerrigan Byrne. It was a ghost romance. I freaking loved it. Five stars. So I had a one star read because I gave that first book one star. I was like, what is the point of it being in this anthology? It's not even romance. And so then I have a five star read. Jennifer Ashley's is next. I read the prologue of this one. They're all like novellas inside of it. And Jennifer Ashley started with Ian talking to his children. And I love The Madness of Lord Ian McKenzie. And this one is part of the like Mackenzie McBride series. So I don't know what it's about, but I'm very excited to continue on with that one. And then there's a couple other in there that I'll read as well for this vlog. So those are the ebooks I want to read. Then I have to read in a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is my Ravish by Romance pick for the book club by Ron with Lacey. We're reading this for December. I always link our Instagram down below. It's all on Instagram is where we make our announcements and then we have our live shows on our channels. I think this one's gonna be on Lacey's channel on the 26th at 9 p.m. EST, but I'm excited for this. She like relives the day over and over again. Then I really need to read A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. I had started it and I got about 20 pages in and then I wasn't in the mood for a Christmas romance yet. This was back in November. So I think she's a princess and he drives a cab. So sounds fun. Then I really want to read A Mackenzie Clan Christmas by Jennifer Ashley. This I think has two novellas. So it's a Mackenzie Yuletide and a Mackenzie Clan gathering. So the first one is Ian and then the next one is Heart. So I'm gonna die. I'm so excited. I've had this book for a long time. I got it from the publisher. They sent it to me to review, but I didn't get around to it because I didn't know the series. So 
this I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that the publisher sent this to me last year then, and I hadn't read the series until this year, so I'm excited. Then, A Highlander is Coming to Town by Laura Trentham. It's a Highland Georgia novel. She is the Scottish lead singer of a touring band, and he hates Christmas, so that should be interesting. Then I have the Christmas backup plan by Laura Wilde. I want to just like your quintessential cute Christmas author romance like I see Laurie Wilde's books everywhere just contemporary and this is the new mass market size I'm always gonna point this out so they're gonna try to sell these this is how they look compared to the regular mass market these are ten dollars these are eight dollars so it's gonna be interesting to see if these actually do take over I know Rebecca Weatherspoon's cowboy series the first book is this size and the second book is this size and I'm scared that's what's gonna happen to all mass markets now we'll see but it's like floppy and I love it I I didn't expect to love it but I do but I'm gonna be annoyed if all mass markets are like this but it's fun so yes I don't know what this is about she's a wedding planner fun and he left the military they live in Twilight Texas sounds cute I'm excited so those are the books I want to read and I'll probably show you lots of my puppies in this vlog and lots of uh, Christmas decorations and I have gifts to wrap I did a lot of Black Friday shopping and I just want to keep on buying more for people so like my parents and I are having a small Christmas it's just me my sister and my parents my brother doesn't want to do gifts this year he didn't want to do gifts last year so we're like okay fine you guys don't get gifts and we're not gonna get gifts from you but now I'm like but I want to buy my parents like a ton of gifts and I feel like I never get them enough and my dad's birthday is right after Christmas so I'm like do I have enough for him so I just keep on buying more for people and that's just what I do so we'll see if I end up buying more for people which I think we will we will my sister and I just keep on like should we get this for mom yeah okay let's get this oh and let's get this too and let's get this too so we spoil our parents a lot I'm already done with my sister's Christmas gifts so it's just my parents left which I should be done with them but I keep on buying more but that is what I have. So I will go to reading because I do have a snow day today. I just finished reading my Black Dagger Brotherhood book for that vlog. It is A Warm Heart in Winter, which could have been in this vlog, but I had to read this for posting it on Friday because I was doing a part of like the blog tour for it for my channel. So I did just finish this, but we have a snow day. It's Tuesday and I'm just going to read today and I'm very excited. We have Lily. What? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Hi guys, so I'm here to update you. Her balls are downstairs, so she's not gonna be annoying with them today. But, oh, I finished Unwrapped by Rebecca Weatherspoon. Let me double check that that's what it's called. Wrapped, it's called Wrapped. There's a different book I think called Unwrapped. But this one started off so good. It's a novella, it's like 100 pages, and our main character is a plus size bakery owner, and she loves baking, and she recently is divorced because of something that happened with her husband and she's on a dating app with her friends in the kitchen. I'm pretty sure like her friends have the actual books in the series. It's book 3.5. I read it just fine um, in the Fit Trilogy. And so she's on a dating app and her friend's like all like, oh, let us look and help you. And they swipe right on this guy named Aiden who she knew through work and it's their romance. And it started off so adorable and so cute. But then I quickly lost interest by like halfway through and I didn't really like the uh conflict at the end i'm probably gonna give it 3.5 stars and i might round it up to four on goodreads because i love the premise i love the beginning i love the romance and how awkward and cute they were together because they were both just like i don't want to say the wrong thing but did i say the right thing like but we like each other but this is super awkward because we're just getting to know each other which was adorable but then like i said i didn't care for the conflict that came at the end and the resolution happened super quickly but that's because it's a novella so it had to end but i thought it was fun and i forgot to tell you i remember now that i got it from bethany's channel from beautifully bookish bethany on her plus size romance recommendations lily is still licking my foot will you stop i know you love me so much so that <laughs> she just went right back down there anyways one book down not too bad like three and a half stars isn't bad to round it up to a four now oh i don't know if i told you but sill from the book voyagers also posted a video of her favorite christmas romances so I'll link that down below if i forget because this is at the beginning of the video when i say i'm gonna link things and i always forget by the end of editing to link them uh tell me to remember to link them down below because i I'm mentioning all these videos for you to watch but that's all i have so far i'm gonna start this one next because it has not a lot of reviews it only has like 150 reviews on goodreads my lighting just like changed weirdly there we go it only has 150 reviews on goodreads and it has like a 3.9 rating what'd you hear what'd you hear okay thank you so i'm gonna read this next and uh she's a part wedding planner and it's his mom oh, stepmother who's like three years older than him owns the ranch that like the girl plans parties for what is going on with my lighting 
he has to give her a ride to the ranch, I think. So I'm excited to read this. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. We're gonna watch the next episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, which we've only watched one episode and it's very interesting. So we'll see how the rest of that goes. Hey guys, it is Thursday and I have some reading updates for you, but I also got a Black Friday purchase of books from Target. They were having buy two get one free, so I bought five books and season four of Outlander, because I was missing season four. I don't know how I didn't get it last year. And season four of Outlander, Blu-ray was only $10, so I just added a bunch of books. And I ended up getting these three historicals, which I'm very excited for. So I got Project Duchess by Sabrina Jeffries. I've heard really good things about her. I don't know what these are about. I looked it up when I bought them, but I don't remember. They sounded good when I did look them up though. And then My Fake Rake by Eva Lee. This is what uh, the Rake Appreciation Society is reading for December. So that is Jen and Crystal for the book club. And they're having the author on their live show, which is really cool. I don't know if I'll get to this before their live show, but I wanted it. And then The Highlander's Christmas Bride. And this is Vanessa Kelly. And Jen has told me to read Vanessa Kelly. This is a little bit further in her series. It is floppy. The zebra historicals are floppy and I love it. And this one just looked so good and it's a Highlander Christmas romance so of course I had to buy it I don't know if my eyebrows like to go out of place sometimes but I'm super excited for this actually I just downloaded the audio but since I have the really pretty paperback I think I want to read this in paperback but I have some updates for you I did read the first novella in the Mackenzie Christmas bind up there's two novellas in there I read the Yuletide one they're both on audio so like individually they're on audiobooks I'm listening to them the first one was about mostly about like all their kids from the series of the Mackenzie series and they are a little bit older than they are in the one I'm listening to now so it's like Ian's and Cameron's and Max and Hart's kids they all like live in the same castle together and there's a ghost in the castle and someone stole a necklace and so this one was just okay I gave it three stars it was kind of boring I liked seeing all the family around but like that compared to the one I'm re listening to now the one I'm listening to now is so good because it's mainly about Ian and I freaking love Ian like his book is probably one of my favorite books of the year so I love seeing him again and so because it was about the kids and they're just trying to find this ghost I feel like it wrapped up pretty quickly it was very short that audio was only three hours when I'm listening to now is five hours so that one was too short I'm gonna give it three stars the one I'm listening to now I think it's like a family Christmas gathering or something I might be wrong it's whatever the second one in that one is it's so good so Ian is with Beth and they have little children so their kids I think their oldest is like nine and they I think there's three of them they're adorable together and someone breaks into their home and steals a bunch of paintings in the beginning and so they're trying to figure out who it was and then Beth's dead husband's brother so like her old brother-in-law has come and he's convinced Ian that he can like cure him so because Ian's autistic and so that was very interesting because like Beth's just like I love you for who you are there's nothing to fix we can't fix you we don't want to fix you so it's adorable I'm loving this so far we still don't know who stole the stuff I have about an hour and a half left of that so I'll probably finish it soon but this one's probably gonna be like a four and a half star so I don't know what I'll be giving the novella bind up as a whole but I'm also into this one and this one I'm surprised because Lori Wilde's a pretty well-known author is very cheesy so like the lines like I don't like it when authors use exclamation points because it feels very juvenile and at one point she's like don't you want to eat and he's like I'd rather be doing this and she's like what and he's like this and then he kisses her and then it was like oh wow boom Merry Christmas like with exclamation points and I was like this is so cheesy like this is writing very cheesy when people talk about cheesy romances this is what it is so I'm not loving it and he uh, has to drive her eight hours or something to a wedding and they hate each other but all three of their siblings have married each other which is weird so now in this family the four siblings I think the four brothers have all married are gonna get together with the four sisters I don't know it's just a little strange like all four with all four if that's happened to you no shame but I think it's just a little weird I've never heard of that happening and like apparently whenever they kiss each other all the couples it's like they feel a hum in the back of their head and of course when they kiss there's a hum and they're like oh it can't be we're not meant to be together it's just a fling it's fine and like you know it's not gonna be so it's very cheesy I'm not loving it and he was in the military and he lost two of his fingers and he has PTSD because of it and so um, at one point she like told him he had OCD because he's like super thorough planner when they went on the road trip he booked an inn in each town in case like the storm st stranded them in a town which they ended up doing so they needed it and she's like well you just have OCD and I don't like it when people try to self-diagnose other people when they really don't know too much about them so that made me a little uncomfortable he's like oh maybe I do and I was like she barely knows you 
don't let her like do that so i didn't like that about her character but it's fine i'll probably this is gonna get like a three at the highest i've read a lot better christmas romances in this the writing's just very cheesy not a huge fan of her character so i flew through this the first half though so i just have like 160 pages left i can definitely get that done tonight but i actually am loving this size of paperback so this is the new mass market size i've shown you guys before compared to this this is how it looks and I like actually really like this. So I'm excited that books are being published this way. It should match in the series, but I'm loving this. That's my FG for today. The next time I talk to you, I'll probably be done with this. And I'll probably do be done with the audio of the Jennifer Ashley romance. And the puppies really want to eat. So we have Darcy there. I think you can see Lily there. It's 4.45 and they eat at 5. So they always get a little antsy right before dinner time. But okay, I'm going to go. I should sew a little bit for my Etsy shop with my book sleeves. And I'm having a huge restock on Sunday. So that's happening. And I'm gonna read some. And I think we're gonna watch Queen's Gambit tonight, maybe. We've started The Flight Attendant, which has Kaylee Cuoco, and it's pretty good. We're two episodes into that, but I really wanna watch the Queen's Gambit, so we'll see if we end up watching that instead. Whatever my sister feels like watching. So, since this is a Christmas vlog, I wanted to show you some of the Christmas masks I have up in my Etsy shop right now. My Etsy shop's always linked down below, and we just have so many different kinds, lots of different fun animals i guess you would say we have snowmen snowmen penguins snowflakes snowmen some i really like this one it's like the hot chocolate these are all up in my Etsy shop i linked down below they are all ten dollars each and i don't know what's going to still be up when this video goes up but check out the shop if you're interested in any fun holiday masks i have super quick shipping you'll get it within the week so check it out i'm also working on my sleeves for this sunday's restock i'm obsessed with this color i might keep one for myself because it's so pretty this one's flannel and um got some snowflakes going up some gnomes i love this fabric so these are the done done ones and those ones i still have to do the edge on i got this really pretty beauty and the beast fabric i love it and then i have my foxes they're not ironed either so that's why they are a little wrinkly i haven't ironed them yet but yep just a little shop update for you guys darcy wants to cuddle so i gotta go downstairs hey guys come in Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead, silly. Up up. Yes. Hello. Oh. <laughs> well, I have Lily here, and of course she is uh, looking right there. Mwah. Anyways, hi. Miss Lily finally decided to come join me. Darcy's right next to me. She was there before I sat down, so she was mad I was ignoring her because I had to go sew, which I just showed you in my previous clip, all the masks I have. Hi, thank you. Now she's going to like me. But, hi. Um, I finished this book, The Christmas Backup Plan. Now she's getting in my lap. You're so good. And look at Darcy. He's not happy about that. But it's okay. It's fine. So I finished this, and I'm going to give it three stars, more like a two and a half. I don't like it when people, it's a little bit of a spoiler of the ending. They move very, very, very fast in their relationship to the point where the ending is something that <laughs> they shouldn't be doing when they've known each other for like two weeks. Well, they've known each other their whole lives, but like they've only liked each other for like two weeks. So that step should not be taken. That's all I'll say. Very cheesy. The writing was very cheesy. I don't like exclamation points in writing. Didn't really like either of the characters. Their romance was just fine. I wasn't really into this. It was fine. It was a very fast read, but not interesting so i'm gonna pick up a uh, real z adams book i'll put it here i don't remember what the title is it's like the 12 dates of christmas or something i don't remember but i'm excited for this because it's real z adams and i really enjoyed go deep so this is about 130 pages and then i want to read i think candy steiner's novella she has the christmas blanket which i completely forgot about and i think i have that and then i forgot i have that historical romance pirate one like captain one completely forgot about that and then i have mistletoes and kisses or something by mangoes and mistletoes by adriana herrera which is a sapphic baking christmas romance but then i have to definitely read in a holiday so i have so much i want to read for this vlog but i think i'm going to read the rosie adams and i want to read a very highland holiday and finish that so who knows when this vlog's going to go up but i'm going to be reading with my puppies one here one here my sister just left for work Kayla from Books and Lala did just post her reading vlog of reading the Goodreads Choice Words for Horror, and it's over uh, an hour and a half long, but those are my plans, so I'm gonna go read. Hey guys, I'm here to update you real quick on my reading. I did finish The 12 Dates of Christmas by Rosie Adams, and I think it maybe is three stars. I had to look and see if it was her first book, because there were a lot of things that were 
not great to me. Like, the romance was a really good premise. So, our main character, Zia, she had pretty much cut off her friendship with this guy for, I think, six years after they ended up hooking up and they were really close friends growing up and then I think that when they were 18 they slept together and then she kind of freaked out and they haven't talked to each other since. When we got into this book I didn't even know like where they were or what she was doing. She was talking about being at an airport and I was like is she a flight attendant? Like what is she? And then she's going to a booth and I was like I'm so confused. I don't know if it's because I don't know what that means like what a booth is and it takes place in the Caribbean and I had no idea that that's where this took place until like halfway through when they were talking about something. So I don't think the author set up the setting very well of letting us know where they are and what they're doing. I think she's like an immigration officer at a booth. I, I still don't know what she does. I don't travel that much so I don't know. I don't know what that is but they end up running into each other because he now lives in the United States and I don't even know like when he moved or why or the context of the relationship in the past because at one point it sounded like they slept together once but then some uh, they commented later on saying like it went on for a year and I don't know if I read that wrong and the the past needed a lot more fleshing out than what it was and I'm just still very confused of a lot of things that happen in here. It is a novella. It's just over 100 pages. So maybe the author didn't have enough time to do it, but I was just like, I don't know anything going on here other than the fact that she and him are now dating with like around Christmas time because they got reconnected and he's still super into her and they ended up sleeping together because they just have insane chemistry. And then she's like, well, we should date. And he's like, okay, well, we're not going to sleep together if we're dating because I want to show you like we belong together. So they go on their like 12 dates of Christmas. And so... I don't know it's just like I had so many things I still didn't know about them that I was very confused by and then they would like say something and I'd be like what did that happen when was that told to us okay and like this is similar to the wrapped novella by Rebecca Weatherspoon one of them just like pulled away because they were being annoying they were just like I just don't think it'll work there's no reason they don't think it'll work they're just like oh it won't work and they pulled away which is what the other one did too and they had a little bit of insecurity because of something in the past for them to say that but I was just like really like he's into you you're into him just be together so this one I'm giving three out of five stars I really liked the premise I liked their dates they were cute and I liked the romance but the writing was weird and like there was a point where it was like they were having a conversation him and his brother were having a conversation with their mom and they said something and then it's like oh but then I told mom I'd get her a donut or something but they didn't have that in the actual dialogue it was part of like just the paragraph text and I was like why didn't you just include that in the dialogue like they're having a conversation and then the author chose not to have him actually say it in dialogue they just like summarize it in the paragraph and I'm like but it's part of the scene have it as part of the dialogue it was just a very weird choice to me and I had to like reread it and be like wait what just what and so there were some stylistic choices that I thought were interesting I don't remember them being in go deep which I really enjoyed and will you be mine I think is by Rosie Adams and I love that so this was just okay. Three out of five stars. I started The Captain's Midwinter Bride because that one's short too. I guess that one's over 100 pages. And they're married in the beginning. I'm only like 8% in because I fell asleep. But they're married. And they're at someone's wedding. And I'm very confused what the premise of this book is. I didn't look at the back. But he's a captain and his daughter's getting married. And he was never around because he was busy captaining and being in the Navy or whatever. And so it's his daughter's wedding. And his daughter hates him because he's never around. So that's the premise of that book. And I'm like, what's the romance going to be? Like, are we following this captain? And I thought it was his midwinter bride. Are we going to flash back to when he married his wife? Because he's married already. I don't know. We'll see. That's how my greeting's going. You're so cute. Lily's being so adorable. She's pretty tired. We went to our parents' house. Our parents' house. My parents' house. For the Ohio State game, it was pretty boring because Ohio State beat Michigan State by a lot. But I'm finally watching all of Marinez's live show she did about the drama that has happened stop licking yourself on booktube but i'm also here with miss darcy so marinez talked about the drama with sasha on book twitter and i've been tweeting about it i know my following on twitter is like not that much but i have much more on instagram and on here and so i thought i'd at least talk about it a little bit in here and i've already had a problem with sasha for a while now especially this year she's traveled excessively because of her moving but she's also broken quarantine a lot that she's shown on her instagram and 
she doesn't have to <laughs> and she had the audacity to on thanksgiving tell people not to travel that she would never travel to see her dad because he's high risk but she was literally in the middle of traveling to london and there's no way you need to travel that much to move at all because she's gonna go again in january or december so that's gonna be four times that she's traveling and it's just already put a bad taste in my mouth i've stopped following her a while ago there's a whole other issues there so i also don't like the fact that she sold arcs i know that it's not technically illegal but you're really abusing your privilege you have as a booktuber who gets physical arcs and some of them were like limited edition bea arcs a, a lot of them were ones she never even read yet she had the privilege of receiving them especially someone in the u.s with a big following like so many other people don't get arcs i would love to get them and review them in a timely manner and help promote the authors and instead of helping promote the authors like she should she turns around and sells them for profit and then denies that she was selling them though she was and it said she was selling them in the description of one of them but she had said she wasn't selling it was just bizarre the signing thing i don't know about i cannot say either way whether that was forged or not but i can link the live show i watched down below about how they discussed it all but i'm on here though i just want to address that really quickly since i have most of my followers here to let you know about it and so that you guys understand what's happening because i've been following that very closely because i saw it happen a while ago before i even like blew up on twitter so yeah Anyways, hopefully she's held accountable for what she did and isn't just like taking her little break from social media and then they come back and have everything the way it was. I finished The Captain's Midwinter Bride and I loved this. I think I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. I think I remember now. Crystal read it and really liked it. And oh, also before I forget, Samantha posted reading Christmas novellas and read The 12 Days of Christmas, which I just read. So I'll link Samantha's little mini vlog down below if you want to watch it. So many videos I'm going to have to remember to link in this video, and I'm going to not, not remember any of them. But anyways, I finished The Captain's Midwinter Bride, and it was so cute. It wasn't really Christmassy. Like, Christmas hasn't happened yet, but it was a kind of second chance. They were married. It is between the captain and his wife. So he's finally home, but, like, he's been gone for most of their marriage, all of their marriage. His daughter's 19, and she's getting married. And they're kind of falling in love again, getting to know each other again. He didn't really realize everything he put him through. He didn't realize everything he put them through, and so he's kind of understanding, like, how much she had to work with him being gone, different stuff that was happening that he wasn't aware of. It was really cute. It was really good. And I liked the little side story with the daughter. I was trying to see if she had her own book because I'd really like to see her book as well. But I really loved it. If you want a married couple learning like to fall in love again, I would definitely recommend this. Four and a half stars, super, super cute. And like, I felt like a fleshed out story, even though it was a novella. So I really liked it. Then I actually, little insert into this vlog, got an arc of Penelope Douglas's novella, which comes out on the 8th. I don't know when I'm putting this video up. I think I'm gonna put this video up on the 9th. So it's already out, but I have an arc of it because it's Sunday. So it's this, it's Saturday. Wow. I also wrote on my board yesterday at school that it was October. And then I posted that Penelope's book comes out in October in my mind thinking it was for December. So I'm a mess in my head, but I'm really excited. It's a novella that takes place after all four books in the Devil's Night series, and it takes place in winter. So it's supposed to be like a Christmas novella. Now I'm like, perfect. It's super short. I think I'm already on page one and it's already 4% in the book and I've only passed through like four pages. So I will update you how that's going. I can't do any spoilers for that novella, but I can let you know my thoughts. So I'm gonna go read that. And then I have my live show tonight, my live show for Romancing Mr. Bridgerton with the Bridgerton, Binging Bridgerton read along. So yeah, that's happening. But okay, I'm gonna go. Miss Darcy's cuddled behind me and she's so cute. My pups just wanna cuddle. So I'm gonna go read new my live show and I'll probably update you guys tomorrow on my reading. So I'm gonna start, I think it's in a holidays and I keep on calling it holiday because of that movie that's on Netflix. I'm gonna read Christina Lauren next. Hey guys, I just got done filming <clears throat> three different videos all in the same outfit. So hopefully you don't mind seeing this uh, Hello Lovely sweatshirt in three videos, but I'm excited for those to go up. I won't tell you what they are because I don't want to spoil. I started In a Holidays by Christina Lauren because I finished Nightfire by Penelope Douglas and this one was really good. It's got your classic action and uh, bad guys in it, but it also has a lot of our main characters interacting. This is book 4.5 in the Devil's Night series. If you haven't read any of the four books yet, don't read this novella. You definitely need to read them because it's when they have kids and that's, I don't want to spoil anything else, but it's about them and their kids and I love seeing them all. We get points of views of all the four guys. I love their romances with all the people that they're with. Their kids are amazing and the way it ended, I'm like, do we get books from their kids please? Because there's one that I'm really interested in. So hearing their story and it was really good if you like the devil's night series you'll definitely love this i give it four stars 
you definitely need to read the series because there's a lot of things that are like alluded to and kind of discussed that you wouldn't have no clue of if you didn't read the series. Check it out. It's out Tuesday. I think it just came out before I posted this. I think I'm posting this Wednesday. We'll see. Maybe Tuesday. I don't know. But I started in holidays by Christina Lauren and I'm 50 pages in and we just got to where she like re is reliving the day. But it starts out where we are at the end of her time there. So it starts on the 26th, December 26th. And then there's a lot of characters. So we are introduced to a lot of them and then it's kind of info dumpy and I'm like, who are these characters so it's a little hard to understand everybody because there's like six families there so there's a lot of people and I'm I was confused but it's getting better so then um something had happened and now it's back to the 20th so we didn't get the first six days initially we just got the last day and now she's reliving it so we're gonna see her reliving it for the first time I don't know how many times it's gonna happen but it's not bad and I don't know who her romance is gonna be with if it's gonna be Andrew or Theo because they're brothers one she's best friends with one she's loved her whole life so I'm kind of thinking it's going to be Andrew, but we'll see. Yeah, so I'm going to read more of that. My parents are coming over tonight with Chili's for dinner, and their dogs are staying here because their windows are getting finally finished. A couple of their windows were back ordered. I We babysat their dogs about a month ago, and it was a lot of fun. I love having four dogs in the house. I know I'm nuts, but Gigi and Eva are a lot of fun. So you'll see them tonight in this vlog, and maybe tomorrow, because I have just this book left. That's all I'm going to read for this vlog, but... Yeah, so they're going to come over tonight, and that's really all our plans today. I just have to take some Instagram pictures and put my stuff up in my shop tonight, and my parents are coming over. Then school's back up tomorrow. I have a ton of Christmas sweaters to wear. I took a bunch of my mom's and some of my sister's and some of mine, so I'm set for two weeks of Christmas sweater wearing. All right, but I'm going to go take my Instagram pictures and then read some more. Hi guys, so it is Monday. I'm wearing one of my mother's Christmas sweaters. I did read like 120 more pages of In Holidays and I'm loving it. I don't know what it is about it. I'm loving the romance. It's super adorable. She's like reliving days as Gigi drinks. I'll show you Gigi in a second, but she's reliving days and she doesn't know why she like messes up and it she has to figure out why she messed up and why it like sent her back and she's finally just like going all out with her crush on Andrew and she's like admitting things to him and it's so cute i'm loving this romance and i don't know if anything steamy is gonna happen because i know a lot of their previous books have been fade to black but i'm 200 pages in it's only 300 pages and they're just like getting together kind of so do we want to see miss Gigi? hi Gigi. oh look at you hi she always does anybody else's dogs do this she's literally like pushing me over out you're standing on my foot to be rubbed look at that look at you yeah are we happy are we happy i don't know if you can see she is wagging her tail for me because she loves me okay anyways i have to go work out with my sister before she goes to work um it's way too cold to stroll them today so we can only stroll them with the two of us because there's four dogs here i'm gonna change then go work out and then finish in the holidays i'm about to sit down and read but i had to show you the puppies i just packed orders for my shop and i'll i'll pop g up here hi Gigi. okay i'll move my stuff Hi guys, I'm here with Miss Gigi, Miss Lily's right behind the camera, Miss Darcy's over there, and Miss Eva is on the bed. I don't know if you can see her, she's over there. I have four puppies and I'm loving life, but I finished In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. Where did I just put it? Right here. I finished, and I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I've liked this the best out of their last three releases. I didn't really like Twice in a Blue Moon or uh, The Honey Don't List, but this one was really cute. I thought the third act breakup was really annoying and that's why I bumped down to a four and I almost gave it three and a half because of the epilogue because it was way too long and their relationship moved very fast. I get that they've known each other literally their entire lives but like <laughs> it was fine. So the romance was really really adorable. I thought it was cute. Friends to lovers and Christmas shenanigans. Adorable. I think the time loop thing was fun. It didn't happen that often though. It only happened a couple times but it was fun. I was just really annoyed with Andrew and how he got mad at the end about something. I was just like, really? And he was like really, really mad about it, but it's fine. Four stars, really fun, surprising, good release. It's definitely very much fade to black. Again, a little bit more details, I think, than some of their other ones, but not a lot of details when it comes to those scenes. So keep that in mind when reading this. It's definitely nowhere near Beautiful Bastard, which they wrote. So I think that, I don't know if they're trying to market more towards women fiction, audience by doing that i don't know why they they transitioned to that but it was a lot of fun i really enjoyed it i would recommend it especially for a holiday romance like it's very very christmasy i do wish that theo and miles her brother and andrew's brother were a lot more fleshed out 
and felt like more real characters. I feel like I didn't know anything about them and I wish they were more, just had more to their characters because they weren't really in this book. I feel like everybody needed a little bit flushed out more. So it could have been a little longer. Like I said in the beginning, it was hard to determine like who was who because we were dumped into the story. But I just feel like their characters weren't really that explained that well. So I didn't feel like I knew them that well other than the like basics that we were told about them, if that makes sense. But very cute. That is where I'm ending this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were or if there are any other Christmas romances I need to read before December's over. Let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day.